a good day for America. I'm so glad we had that storm last week because I think oh. the storm was one of those things. No, politically, I should say, yeah. not in terms of hurting people. The storm brought in possibilities for good politics. There it is, MSNBC, the left-wing cable channel of the state, saying, it, it's Chris Matthews saying he was so glad Hurricane Sandy came. Isn't that strange? Joining us now from New York City is our friend Charles Cook from National Review. Charles, you wrote a list of uh, the top uh, list of things you learned from this American election season, and the partisanship of the left-wing press was one of them, wasn't it? Yes, I mean, I think that part of it is, is, is well known. It was especially MSNBC, which I think is struck... Uh, snuck rather somewhat under the radar in recent years. You know, everybody knows, in inverted commas, that Fox is conservative, and it is. It does lean that way. But the, there was a study done by Pew, and it showed that um, you know half the time Obama got poor coverage on Fox, but uh, almost uh, two thirds of the time, above two thirds of the time, Romney on MSNBC. And as you can see, that was a, a quote by Chris Matthews that shows that pretty well. You know, uh, give me a, a quick uh, list of a few other things you, as an Englishman in New York. Uh, observed about the, the U.S. election that perhaps a, a Native American, uh, sorry, a, a, an American citizen or even a Canadian might not have noticed. What struck you as a Brit in New York as uh, notable? Well, uh, you know, America is unfortunately on a, on a long march towards the Europeanization that uh, people like myself have left, but it was heartening, for example, to see that the debates um, Neither, neither candidate felt, uh, felt that it would help them to talk about gun control. Uh, neither candidate wanted to talk about climate change. And that seems to have been a bit of a change over the last four or eight years. You, there was a, was a uh, bit of a um, competition between uh, Romney and Obama as to who could talk about burning the most coal. <laughs> um, I mean, that, that to me was astonishing. You would never get that in a, in a British election, for example. Well, but I've been following you on Twitter, and you've had a lot of very sad comments. I mean, you, in a way, are a re refugee from the UK to America. I mean, America is a place where people find refuge, not just for economic reasons, but for moral freedom, for political freedom. If people can't flee to America as the freest place in the world, if it's no longer the freest place in the world, if it's no longer the last best hope, well, where is? There's nowhere to go. I mean, this is, this is the, the interesting thing to me and, and, and perhaps the terrifying thing. When you listen to the American left, a, a lot of them, they idolize Europe. Um, they like Canada too, um, they like Britain. And there's a phrase they use frequently, they say, well, America is the only country in the industrialized world where, and, and they see that as being a negative thing. And then, you know, you can put whatever you want after it. I see in, in many of those cases that being a very positive thing. I mean, for example, America is the only country in the industrialized world, perhaps in the whole world, where you can't be arrested for speaking. Yeah. Um, it's the only country in the industrialized world in which there are very few restrictions on the ownership of firearms, where religion is um, or has been uh, entirely free. Um, and, uh, and, and I think it's, it'll be a real shame if America decides to emulate, uh, emulate Europe. Marco Rubio has a good line about this. He says, these are the policies of this administration. These are the policies that many people came to get away from, myself included. Uh, and that's the thing, is people fl flee to America because it is exceptional, but we saw Barack Obama say, oh, yeah, I believe in exceptionalism the same way any Brit or Greek might. I mean, he, he doesn't get it. I don't think he believes it either. I think he wants to be a, uh, a post-American president. I think he wants to be the president that brings America back down a size of one of 200 countries. Do you think I'm being too dramatic or too apocalyptic when I say that? No, I think he's deeply uncomfortable with American exceptionalism, as a lot of people are, because it implies that some cultures are better than others, which they very obviously are. Um, you can get agreement on this if you give an extreme example. For example, if you say that the American culture is better than the Saudi culture, people will nod along. But when you say the American culture is better than most European cultures or British culture, people get very uncomfortable. I, do, I really don't think they should. On the exceptionalism front, uh, the the British and the Greeks were good examples because uh, Barack Obama is doing his best to get the British uh, health care and the Greek economy. So perhaps, he, uh, perhaps we should have listened to him back then. Hmm. Now, you said, uh, you wrote something uh, yesterday that uh, I thought was very sad. You said, once a country loses its classical liberal values, 
it doesn't get them back. And I saw some people quarreling with you. I mean, maybe uh, Vaclav uh, Havel and some other Eastern European countries are proving you wrong. I don't know. Is it possible that if America goes four years down the road of more regulation, more limits to free speech, more government intervention in the economy, is it possible to pull back? Can you pull a Margaret Thatcher and a Ronald Reagan? Or have the demographics and politics changed so much that this is a, a, an irrevocable change? Well, the, the first thing is, with the fact of Havel and, and some of Eastern Europe, they certainly went from tyranny back to a, a much better form of government. But I wouldn't say they necessarily got their classical liberalism back if they ever had it. Um, on, on America, you know, I, I, really, don't, uh, I really don't think so. Um, Mrs. Thatcher did very well in restructuring the British economy and bringing Britain back from inevitable decline. But she didn't undo the damage that was done in the 40s and 50s. Similarly, you know, Reagan did a, a great job in the 80s of bringing America back to its feet. But the, the one-way ratchet of, of constant growth of government and, and government interference did not move backwards at all. It never does. The government continued to grow. So, no, I think classical liberalism is a precious uh, commodity, and I, I don't think you can get it back when you lose it. Yeah, Charles Cook, I share your depressed take on things. I hope that I'm proven wrong, but I fear I won't be. Thank you for joining us today from Me New York. Too.